Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. Mark, 99.99999% that he is the father. Slam dunk, right? I would say so. And again, this is not about religion. He can argue that all he wants. He'll argue it in sentencing. It's not going to matter to this conservative Texas jury. He, his DNA is inside the DNA of a baby inside of a child. That's it. We're done. Right. Yeah. The case, right. That's what I would think. Case closed. And I, I certainly hope that the jury doesn't contemplate anything else. It's disgusting, right? Well, it's, it's clearly abhorrent, but it's a very simple process for a jury. There are elements to the crime, and they question, okay, did the prosecution meet the elements of the crime? Did they carry their burden? Did they prove each and every one? The answer is um, yes, and then they go to a penalty phase, a separate phase, and he can argue all he wants. Well, I was born into this. This is just how I was raised. Uh, it's religion. Whatever cockamamie stuff he wants to argue, the bottom line is his conduct's abhorrent, allegedly. And uh, ultimately, I, I, he's, not even, he's not even defending it. He's not saying that he didn't do it. So ultimately, his excuse could be shown to the jury in the form of mitigation, if that's what you want to call it, and they could decide whether he gets the full 119 years that he's facing. Now, the prosecution apparently has a recording in which they claim you can clearly hear Jeff's having sex with a 12-year-old girl. There are also, we've heard this before, allegedly other people in the room watching. Why would he record himself having sex? Why would followers be in the room? Christy, this girl's 12 years old. As a mother mm -hmm. to young daughters, what, what goes through your head when you hear this stuff? It's stomach turning is the first thing I can say I do. I've got three kids, ages three little girls, ages two to seven. So this is particularly hard to, to listen to and to imagine. It's hard enough to imagine the act, but to imagine that it was something that was recorded and with other people in the room, possibly as we understand it, other sister wives, uh, it, it's, it's numbing. I can't even explain it to you in terms of what it's like in that courtroom because people are on the edge of their seat today waiting to listen to this, this recording and it's a packed courthouse today. Uh, Dr. Drew, it, everybody is just waiting for this one. And Warren Jeffs has been particularly agitated today uh, when it comes to some of the evidence that's been presented regarding his personal journals and writings and, and some of the, the documents that were admitted into evidence today. He gets really offended and stands up. He, he made so many objections today, basically saying that uh, this continued presentation is an abuse of that which is holy. He went on to say that it's sacred to others, but not to you. So trying to put into perspective that, look, what is sacred to me doesn't necessarily mean it's sacred to you. And once in a while, I'll hear him say something you might realize is somewhat clever. He'll say, my religion and my principles and edicts are important to me, just like yours are important to you. So sometimes he throws something out there to try, I think, to get empathy and make people put themselves in his shoes and try to understand the religious acts, aspects of this. But again, the prosecution always coming back to the fact that the U.S. Constitution does not advocate that religion can override the safety of children. That's exactly right. If my religion believed that I needed to throw a baby in the volcano to appease God or God told me to do that, it would still not be okay. Now, the jury saw a portrait photo today of one of the victims, a child bride and Jeff's taken around the time they were married. You can see here she is hugging him. Brandon, you have defended members of the FLDS church. Um, there's the photo, the high probability, the virtual, you know, absolute probability he is the father of a 15-year-old teenager's baby. Give me your perspective on this. Well, my perspective is this. I got to know a lot of those men who were in the church under Warren Jefferson were there when their fathers were there and their grandfathers were in that church. I, you know, what Warren Jeffs did when he was the, the leader of that church and in charge after his father, Rulon, passed, there were a lot of changes. Those men grew up in the church that they knew. They practiced and they were faithful in that church. Now, all these allegations and this audio tape and things like that, none of that was evidence that we had in any of the cases with the men that I represented. And as I, I never met Warren Jeffs, don't know anything about him other than, you know, what's in the media. But what I will tell you is the men that I got to know were completely different than what is Warren Jeffs is being portrayed here. And I think a lot well, of Brandon, people in the I, community I'm going to tell you, let, let, 
Sure. Let me just say something kind of provocative, and, and that is that I know lots of people that have done horrible things, and that seem nice enough, seem you know friendly enough, and uh, seem like good people, and do horrible things. I mean, I, I see that all the time. And I hear people defending the community, saying, well, it's just some of their leaders. We can't hold them all accountable for that. Uh, you know, now we're hearing that some of the clergy or some members of the, of, the, of the leadership were in the room when this happened. I mean, at some point, don't we have to hold the community accountable for this? At some point? I, I am not asking anybody in the community or you to excuse what these people did if they did these things. What I'm saying is, as, as Mark talked about mitigation, it's not cockamamie. It is what these people knew. That doesn't mean that a jury can't listen to it and decide to give them some type of punishment like they did in those cases, but it gives them context. Like you said at the beginning of the show, it's what culture were we raised in? What do we know? If they stood by why Warren Jeffs did what, what this audio, and how do we know who was present or what was present? If this was in fact recorded, should someone be responsible? Sure. But all right. That doesn't mean that everybody in the church is, is, is at the same level as Warren Jess by any means.